Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Storytime. I'm Miss Sharon, and this is the Story Train Storytime. <laughs> welcome. Well, good morning, and I'm just so glad that you could join me here today because we're friends, and I enjoy spending time with my friends, and I know you do too. So this is why we're here today, to talk about some reading and some stories and some letters of the alphabet. So let's sing our hello song first, the one that we're learning this morning. We're learning every day, so sing along if you can. Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. Hello, hello, it's something you should know. Hello, hello, I'm so glad that you are here. It's so nice to share some time with you. We're friends forever true. Again, hello, hello, and welcome to the show. Hello, hello, there's something you should know. Hello, hello, I'm so glad that you are here. It's so nice to spend some time with you. We're friends forever true. And good morning. Yes, today is a new day and we are here sharing our, our little bit of time together on story time. And the sun came up and it's a brand new day and we're just so excited because I think the sun might be up where you are. The sun might be out. The sun is always up every day when you get up. Then it's a new day. And so here we have Mr. Sun. Let me just move my chair over a little bit. We have the sun right here. And he came up today. And we can sing because we're so grateful and happy that every day he does. Even if you don't see him, he's behind the clouds. But he's there because it's daytime. It's a new day. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take our sunshine away. And it's a new day. And we, we also need to change the date because it's Friday today. It was Thursday yesterday, and it was March 26th yesterday. So I have my calendar in here, and this keeps track, and it tells me what day it is. And today's March, March 27th. And so I have that right here because all the time, all day long, it'll be March 27th, Friday. So I get to look there, and I get to check the time. I, I, well, I look at the clock for the time, and I look at the calendar for the date. And it says what day it is, and it's Friday. Yesterday was Thursday, tomorrow is Saturday, and today's Friday, boys and girls. I'd like to sing happy birthday to you. Because if it's your birthday, I want you to know that I think that's such a wonderful, special day for you. And so we'll sing happy birthday to you, and we'll sing it two times. It's good to learn how to sing happy birthday two times. Just because it's, it's such a pretty song. And we love to hear it two times. And even sometimes, maybe if you're washing your hands, you can practice singing that two times. So if today's your birthday, I'm so happy that it's your birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Maybe we could use these. These are the symbols. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Ha again. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And that means that it's a special day because it's your birthday. And boys and girls, when you're washing your hands, you can practice singing that song two times. Okay? And now I'd like to also say hello to some friends. And I have my crystal ball right here. And in the crystal ball are names of children. I would like to say hello this morning to Hayden 
and Bailey. Oh, there, right there. And Davey and Mackenzie and Savannah and CJ and Otis and Hazel, Winter and Elsie and Han Hannah and Camille. Isabella, Siciliana, Dylan, oh, there's so many friends, there's millions. But I can only say hello to some of the children, because I wouldn't have time to say hello. But hello to everyone. That's why we sing the hello song. That means hello to everyone, all children in the whole world, because we're all friends. And we're friends. And I have my tea cup, my tea mug, and it always says friends, because I'm here sharing story time with you. And I have my teapot. And we can sing that song for the teapot. I have tea inside the teapot. And we can sing the teapot song. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. This is my handle and this is my spout. When I get all steamed up, hear me shout. Tip me over and pour me out. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, hear me shout. Tip me over and pour me out. That's my teapot. And I have tea. And I hope that you have something to drink this morning like milk, maybe, or apple juice. And you're sitting there, we're going to have some. Today's a good day because we're going to have some music today, too, because it's Musical Friday. And we can do some, we can learn about the letters today. Again, like we always do, we do the uh, little bit of the alphabet. We're learning that. And we sing the alphabet song because we're learning the letters, right? And so the letters are, and we can sing that song. And you can sing it with your mommy or your daddy or your babysitter or your grandma or your grandpa or your brother or sister. And we'll sing that like right now. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V. W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Thank you for singing with me. And so today, the letter that we're going to talk about today is the letter U. It's a vowel. There are five vowels in the alphabet. There's 26 letters and five of them are vowels. And they are A, E, I, O, and U. And today we're going to talk about the letter U and some of the words that have the letter U sound in them. Because all the letters have sounds. They have names, but they also have sounds. The A has the sound of E. Eh. The E has the sound of E. Eh. The I has the sound of I. Eh. The O has the sound of A, ah, and the U has the sound of A. Ah. So we're going to talk today about the letter U. So the letter U has the sound of A. Ah. And I have some, I'll show you what it should sound like, right? So this is the word bus. B -a -s, bus. And the letter U has the sound of a. Uh. And this is the word bug. And the letter U has the sound of a. Uh. And that is the word bug. B -a -g. And here's the letter U, nice and tall. There's a capital U and a little, a baby U right there, a little U. It needs to be turned up, because this is the word up. U-P, up, up, up. 
Those are the words. And we have a story that we, we're going to read today called Curious George. And that has the letter U in it right there. So let's, let's read this story, Curious George. Curious George is a monkey. And Curious George goes to the hospital. And I'm using the storybooks that I have here at my house. Because right now, the libraries are closed. The schools are pretty much closed down. And we're all spending more and more time with our families at home. So this is a book that I had here. And if you and I mean you're probably reading books that are in your home. And and that's good. And you can also be writing stories. That's so important. Why not write your own stories too? I I do. So curious George, this is George. He lived with his friend, the man with the yellow hat. He was a good little monkey, but he was always curious. Do you know what curious means? Curious means always wondering why and what if something. So you're always wondering and you're looking at this and you're trying to do that because you're wondering what will happen if you do something. You're curious. And especially children are very curious. Today, George was curious about a big box on the man's desk. So he decided to open the box. He couldn't resist. And when he opened it, there were funny little pieces of things. He thought they were candy. And he decided, well, maybe it was candy. And that he would try a piece of uh, one of them. And he put it in his mouth. And before he knew it, he had swallowed it. So he wasn't sure what it was. But... He thought I would, he would try it anyway, and he ate a piece of what he thought was candy. Curious George was so curious. And then when the man came home, he opened the box that was, that was on his table, and he goes, George, and he says, George, I bought a jigsaw puzzle. See it right here? Let's try and put the pieces together. And so the man did not know that George had already opened that box and had eaten one of the pieces. <laughs> Finally, the puzzle was finished. Well, almost finished because that's right, boys and girls, one of the puzzle pieces was missing. The man looked everywhere for the piece of puzzle, but he, did, he could not find it. The next morning, George did not feel well. He had a little bit of a tummy ache. And so the man with the yellow hat decided to call Dr. Baker. And Dr. Baker said, I'll be right over. And he came over to check George to see what was the matter. And he said, well, I really can't tell what it is. I think he'll have to go to the hospital to have an x-ray so that we could maybe see what's in his stomach. So an x-ray is like a picture. It doesn't hurt. They take a picture of your, of George's stomach and they put him on right there and the nurse was so nice to him and he was right there and they took a picture of his stomach. And then they were so surprised when the picture came, when they saw the picture because it, they saw that George had swallowed a piece of the puzzle. So George had to go to the hospital and stay there overnight for a couple of days overnight while they, because they, because they needed to take the puzzle out, the piece of puzzle out of his stomach. Because <laughs> sometimes when you're so curious, sometimes you make a mistake and you try something, it might not be the best thing to do because you're so curious. You want to just find out about that. And, but when he went there, he saw a lot of other children there too. Some of them had fallen down and got a boo-boo. And some of them had gotten a scratch and they needed medicine. But he was there because he had swallowed a piece of a puzzle. And so the, the, the man in the yellow hat had to go home. And then the doctors and nurses came over to talk to George. And it was almost time for them to take the piece of puzzle out of his stomach. 
and they took him in and they all cleaned up nice. Everything was so clean. And they and George went to sleep. He took a nice nap and when he woke up, it was all done. The piece of puzzle was not in his stomach anymore. He was just really tired. So he was too tired to play with the other children right then. But he was going to feel better. And the next day he got to have something to eat. And then the next day after that, he got to play around with the children who were there. He was still there because he needed to rest. They wanted to make sure that he was still, that he was all better. And he gave a puppet show for the children. And he played with the toys and had fun. And he was still so curious about everything. That's why his name is Curious George. And then it was almost time for him to go. But he decided that he would, he was curious about a wheelchair. So he was so curious. So he got in the wheelchair when no one was looking. And he went flying down the hall with the wheelchair. So everyone was chasing him. And he was going so fast. And there was a crowd of people down the bottom of the hallway. And he crashed into everybody and everything went all over the place. But everybody was, no one was mad. And all of the children came over. They were his friends and they were smiling and they were all happy. So nobody was mad. Because he's just a curious George. And then it was time for him to go home. And he was saying goodbye to his friends. <laughs> and, the, and the man with the big hat came in and picked him up. And it was time to go home. And just as he was leaving, the nurse ran over to give him a present. And she handed him a little box. And she said, don't open this until you get home. And when he did... Curious George opened up the little box, and inside was what? What was that? That's right. It was the piece of the puzzle that was in that the doctor got out of his stomach. <laughs> so his name is Curious George, because that has a C and a U in it, and that's the letter for today is U. Curious George goes to the hospital by Margaret and H. A. Ray. That's an older story, but it's still a good book. And it's about a monkey who lives with a man. So we could sing Five Little Monkeys. Why don't we do that? Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Four little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped her head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Three little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped her head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Two little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped her head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. One little monkey jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped her head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. <laughs> no more monkeys jumping on the bed. That's it. No more monkeys jumping on the bed. They all fell off and bumped their head. And that's that. Let's sing now. How about, about the vowels? Old MacDonald had a farm. Using the vowels, A, E, I, O, and U. Those are the vowels, and it's good for us to learn what those are, even if we don't really know 
what vowels are yet, it's good to learn them in a song because you will be learning them at school when you go to school. Oh, MacDonald had a farm, A-E-I-O-U, and on his farm he had some apple trees, A-E-I-O-U, with an A-A-A ah, ah here and an A-A-A ah, ah there, here and A, ah, there and A, ah, everywhere and, I'm looking for the A, ah, A ah sound, everywhere and A, ah, A, ah, Old MacDonald had a farm, A-E-I-O-U. And on his farm he had a hen, A-E-I-O-U. And it's an E. With an a eh, a eh, here and an a eh, a eh, there. Here and a, eh, there and a. Eh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Everywhere an a eh, a. Eh. Old MacDonald had a farm, A-E-I-O-U. And on his farm he had some pigs, A-E-I-O-U. And that's an I, with an I, I here and an I, I there. Here and I, there and I, everywhere an I, I. Old MacDonald had a farm, A-E-I-O-U. And on his farm he had some, he had a dog, A-E-I-O-U. And that's an O, with an ah ah here and an ah ah there. Here and ah, there and ah, everywhere and ah, ah, old MacDonald had a farm, A-E-I-O-U. Letter U now. And on his farm he had a duck, A-E-I-O-U, with an ah, ah, here and an ah, ah, there. Here and ah, there and ah, everywhere and ah, ah, old MacDonald had a farm, A-E-I-O-U. And that's the vowel song. There's the alphabet song and there's also the vowel song. And those are some letters and we all, we did our words. Now, if you're writing a story, boys and girls, you can send your story to info at the storytrain.com. Your parents can see that written on the video of where to send that to. And I'll get to read some stories. Or maybe you'll have some pictures for me to look at it. And if you're reading, if you're writing a new story, your story has to have four parts. And the four parts are, you must have a character. And that's who the story is about. So for the Curious George book, the character was George. He was the character. And the setting for this Curious George book is, so there's the setting, and that means where the story take place. And it takes place at Curious George's house and also at the hospital. That's the setting for the story. And then there was a problem. You need to have a problem for it to be a story. And the problem was that Curious George ate a piece of the puzzle. And it was in his stomach and he had a tummy ache. And so then his, the, oh, the, the, his, the man with the hat called the doctor. This is the solution. How did they fix that problem? called the doctor, and the doctor came to the house and said that he needed to have an x-ray, and they saw the puzzle, and then they had to get the piece of puzzle out of his stomach, and then that was the solution. And then he got to go home, and then the nurse had that piece of puzzle, and they got to finish the puzzle, too. So that character setting, problem, and solution is... If you're writing a story, boys and girls, if you're writing your story. Um, okay, so if, if, I, if we have some words for you, I, want, I would like you to listen to the words that I say to you and compare and tell me which one of the two words 
has the sound of U, has an uh sound. So if we have the word big and we have the word bug, you listen to those words, listen. You don't have to write anything down. Listen to b, ig, and b, ug. That's right. The word bug has the sound of you. Ah. Allie. Hi, Allie. I'm glad you're joining me today. We are talking about the letter U. And we just read a story about Curious George. So the letter U. So for two words, listen to these two words and tell me if you hear the letter U, which is the sound uh. So if we have these two words, how about if we have bun, which is like a, a roll, a sandwich, a piece of bread, a bun, and bin. So do you hear the sound uh in bun, uh, or do you hear it in bin, which has the sound of i? Eh? That's right. You hear it in the word bun. That has the sound ah. Oh, there goes my cuckoo clock. That keeps time for us on story time. That, that means it's 11 o'clock here where I am. Oh, and there go the little people. You hear that? Oh, where's the music? It should be. There it goes. <laughs> They're a little slow today. I don't know why it's so slow, but that's my cuckoo clock. We could wind that. Let's do that. And I wind that with these little strings here. So there's some little strings, and these are weights. And we just pull them out. Oh, see that? That's how you wind a cuckoo clock. There aren't any batteries, and you don't plug it in. And you don't turn anything. You pull the weights up. And the weights are what? These little things, those are what? Help it keep time. So that I'll know always what time it is. And that's my other clock, my choo-choo train story. Choo-choo, <laughs> choo-choo train story time clock. There we go. So we're doing our words, and now it's time to, how about if we, if we rhyme some words? So let's rhyme some words that rhyme with, that means they sound the same as, let's, let's, let's say, how about the word up? Can you think of a word that would rhyme with the word up? How about the word cup? Cup, up, what else rhymes with up? <clears throat> um, my, no, nut, <laughs> there we go. And how about something that rhymes with the word, with the word bug? What rhymes with bug? How about rug? How about Tug, bug, rug, and tug. Those rhyme, those rhyme, they rhyme. Those are rhyming words. How about the word, how about the word, let's see, how about the word pin? What rhymes with the word pin? Pin, tin, sin. We don't do any of that. <laughs> tin, pin, bin. Those are rhyming words, and they rhyme. They all sound, they all have the same ending. They just change the first letter of the word. And we did our alphabet, and now we can do some exercises. So we're going to do our exercises. We take a deep breath, and we let out our deep breath. And then we take a deep breath, and then we let out our breath. And I hope that you'll go outside and run around today. It looks like a nice sunny day and get some exercise and we'll touch our, and we'll do some bending down. One, bend down as far as you can. Two, and three, four, <laughs> five, don't fall over. Now on one foot, if you need to hold on, or if you can balance yourself, that's good. Pick up your foot, one foot. Oh, try and balance, don't fall over. And then your other foot, oh, right there. Try and balance, don't fall over. Very good, touch your shoulders. Smile, because smile, you have muscles. Don't touch your face. You have, you have muscles in your face and you wanna go like that and scrunch your face up like that and use your muscles <laughs> and scrunch your eyes, right? And show me your, your happy face. And show me your sad face. Well, show me your mood face. Mm. 
and show me your quiet face. <laughs> and, show, and that's the muscles. And touch your elbows, right? Those are your elbows. And wiggle your ears just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit, because they spend a lot of time listening. So we need to exercise them sometimes. <laughs> they get tired of hearing so many things. And so we read that story. We did some exercising. And today is Musical Friday. And every Friday, we talk about music and musical instruments. Miss Sharon likes to sing. She doesn't really play a musical instrument very well. She knows a lot of musicians who do. And maybe you do too. Maybe you know someone who plays guitar. Or maybe you know someone who plays piano or, or plays an instrument. Maybe you play an instrument. But I, I, I like to sing, mostly. But I did bring my, my guitar, even though I'm just learning how to use it. So I thought I could show you that and we could try to play a few notes for that. So this is my, I'll show you this. This is my guitar. It's so pretty. It's black and it has a pretty, a pretty picture of a phoenix on it. And this is called the neck of the guitar. <laughs> Don't ask me things. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. And so this is a shoulder strap. And you wear it like that. And you put it on your show around your shoulder like that. And then it holds the guitar in place. I'm learning these things. And then once you have it like that, then you have these are strings. Like that. See? And you can play different notes with the guitar. So I haven't really learned how to do that yet, but we can hear the sound that it makes anyway. You hear that? And you could sing the note with me. Me. And you can change the note of the guitar by putting a finger on the string like that. So this is the this is the sound and then it changes like that. And then the next string sounds like this. Me. And I can change that to me. 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 So they all change depending on what I put my where I put my fingers on here. But I don't really know how to play the chord they're called chords yet. But I can do that. Me. 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 Low. Ready? Me, 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 me. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Me. Well, so that's my guitar. And I was so happy. When I was 11 years old, I wanted a guitar. This is not the one from when I was 11. And I had hoped at Christmas time I would get one. And so, but it didn't, I didn't think I was going to get one. It was such, a, it was a big present to ask for, for Christmas. And so Christmas morning came and I hoped that, you know, and I wasn't really sure that I, that I would get what I wanted. I didn't want anything else. I only wanted a guitar. And I didn't, I got up that Christmas, but I kind of just didn't really get out of bed. And I didn't go down to see under the Christmas tree. And then my mother called me. She said, Sharon, come down here. There's still, you haven't opened your presents yet. And I said, well, I don't really know if I'm going to get a guitar, but I'll go check. And so I went downstairs and there was a box in the back. Everyone had already opened all their presents and there was one box left. Just a cardboard box behind the Christmas tree. And it had my name on it. And my mother said, Sharon, there's one present there for you. Why don't you go and get that present? And I said, but I only wanted a guitar. Well, my mother said, well, just go open it. Maybe you'll be surprised. And so 
I it was a little heavy and I pulled it out and I opened and I put it on the floor and I lifted the cover and what did I find? A guitar. So I was 11 years old and I got a guitar for Christmas. And something happened and I don't remember and I never really learned how to play the guitar. I don't know, I had a lot of brothers and sisters and I think that they used it and maybe broke the strings, I can't remember. But, so finally a couple of years ago I got a guitar for myself again. And so I'm just learning how to do that right now. I'm learning. So also we have a couple of other instruments. Maybe you know what this is. What do you think that is, Allie? What is that? That's called a tambourine. And we can sing a song. We'll use the tambourine. Why don't we do that? Let's sing. How about Five Little Ducks? That's such a good song to learn. Ready? All right. Five little ducks went swimming one day Over the hills and far away Mommy duck said quack, 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 quack But only four little ducks came back Four little ducks went swimming one day Over the hills and far away Mommy duck said quack, 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 quack But only three little ducks came back Three little ducks went swimming one day Over the hills and far away Mommy duck said quack, 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 quack but only two little ducks came back. Two little ducks went swimming one day over the hills and far away. Mommy duck said quack, 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 quack. But only one little duck came back. One little duck went swimming one day over the hills and far away. Mommy duck said quack, 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 but no little duck came swimming back. Oh no, they all went on an adventure. So the next day, Mommy duck, one said Mommy duck went swimming one day over the hills and far away. Mommy duck said quack, 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 quack. She was calling her baby. And all five little ducks came swimming back. Yay! All the ducks came back. They went on an adventure. They went for a picnic without their mommy. They shouldn't do that. Because then she missed them. But then they came back. So that's a tambourine. And I also have a bigger one that makes a bigger noise than this one. This is a kind of a smaller noise. And that has, because it has more of these things on it. This is it's a tambourine that has, and those metal things make it, it makes the noise with that. And then I also have maracas. That's what these are. I have a big one that makes a big noise, and I have a little one that makes a little noise. And you can, you can make, you can pretend and make songs with different things. You could put some, have your mommy or your daddy. They could make, they could take a can, an empty coffee can, or maybe a salt shaker and take out the salt and put some rice in there. And the rice would be a Morocco and it would sound like that. And you would have, be able to make music with that. You could do that. You also could use the, I have these right down here. Oh, these are bongos. Aren't they pretty? Bongos. And they have like a canvas thing on the top. And we can sing a song with the bongos. Let's do that. Let's see. What would we sing? How about, how about the wheels on the bus? And we'll use the bongos to try to sing that. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Depends on where you hit hit the canvas. It makes a different sound. So people play. It's like playing the drums, but without sticks. You use your hands. So we can do. We can play the. We can sing the wheels on the bus. The wheels on the bus go. Swish, swish. 
swish, you'll have to do that. Because I'm playing the bongos. Swish, swish, swish. Swish, 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 the wipers on the bus go swish, 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 all through the town. The baby on the bus goes wah, 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 wah. The baby on the bus goes wah, 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 all through the town. One more. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 all through the town. Like that. So those are the bongos, right? And that makes a nice sound. It's like playing the drums sometimes like that. And also we have... Little symbols like that, right? And they have a the little thing. You could probably use a pot, the covers of pots and pans to do that. And also, we have a triangle that's what this is called, right? And it makes such a pretty sound. Pretty. We could sing a song with that. How about? If we sing, we could sing, what song? How about Bingo? There was a, there, let me get that note. There was a farmer who had a dog, and Bingo was his name, oh. B-I-N-G-O, 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 and Bingo. Was his name oh? Hear that? <laughs> you could probably do that with one of your pots and pans and make that pretty noise with a fork. Well, maybe not a fork. How about a spoon? You could do that with a spoon. Yeah. See, it's always so nice to sing, especially all the time, not just on Musical Friday. Miss Sharon loves to sing. And singing is so nice, and it makes you smile, and it makes you happy. Oh, Homer Beer. Homer Beer every day likes to come out and say hello to the boys and girls. So I he's, he, he sleeps in the music box. And when I open the music box, it plays a lovely tune called Swan Lake. <laughs> and look who's inside there. Look at that. It's Homer Beer. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute. <laughs> he sleeps in there. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum. Oh, the music went out. That means he needs to go in and take another nap. And he goes right in there and he sleeps until it's time to come out and visit again. And we play the music for Homer Bear. Yeah. So if you have paper, maybe, and your crayons or a pencil, and I hope that you're drawing and you are going to be writing a story. You can write that about whatever you like and then your mommy or your daddy or your grandma or your grandpa or your teacher could send that to me at info at thestorytrain.com. And I read all of the stories from all of the children and sometimes I read them or I show the pictures on TV. So I would love to get some stories from you. So I think um, it's just such a nice day outside. I hope, well, it is where I am, and it's been cloudy and overcast for the past couple of days. So I think, um, I hope that you get outside, because I know I'm going to take a walk with my dog, Phoenix, and we're going to take a walk around the neighborhood, and we're going to think about more things for tomorrow's show. And for now, we will be saying, and I will see you next time on Story Time, and we're learning a song that I wrote. For when we say, I'll see you next time. Friend, and this is the song, so sing along if you can. If you're learning it, that's okay. I'm learning it too every day. Friends will always be forever you and me. Learning and sharing with friends. With friends, I like you because you're you. <laughs> 
You like me, yes you do. Laughing and sharing with friends, with friends. For now we'll say adieu. But that just means till next time. But smile, don't be blue. We're always together. My heart is there with you. Thank you so much for being here today for story time. And I'll see you tomorrow. And you have a good day and keep writing and reading your keep writing your stories, drawing pictures, and also reading your books. And stay busy eating healthy and, and drinking lots of water. Okay. Have a wonderful day, children, boys and girls, and everyone else out there. Bye.